Hmm. Pumping systems, compressors, valves, heat exchanger, reboilers, condensers, distillation columns, gas absorbers, batch reactor, continuous steer tank reactor, and much more. So what does this type of equipment have in common and how do we categorize them? Coming up next. <laughs> Hey what is up guys, welcome once again to the channel, it's always great to have you back and if you are new, don't forget to subscribe. Remember that in this channel we talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals that want to boost their knowledge in this field. Let's talk about unit operations and how we arrange them or categorize them. And of course I'm just going to be considering the most important unit operations because as you can see, if you already went to a chemical plant, it's not so simple to categorize unit operations, but more importantly, there are a lot of unit operations, equipment that are used in chemical and process industries. But I will try to be considering the most important ones or the ones that you are most likely to encounter. And there are many ways in which you could, in theory, categorize these unit operations, but the most common one that you will encounter is via their operation. Or how does this equipment fundament their operation? So, for instance, a heater has the main task of increasing the temperature of a liquid or a gas. Hence, the equipment is considered to be a heat transfer operation. And you're most likely wondering how many transfer operations do we have or how we categorize these and they are pretty simple and this is the best thing that we don't have that many or we don't use that many in the industry. So number one will be momentum transport operations, which is based on the change in momentum. Let it be the movement of fluids, let it be the change in pressure, height, volume, compression, etc. Then we have heat transfer operations, which as the name implies, works mostly with heat, either heating a fluid, maybe cooling down a fluid, condensing, evaporating, reboiling, maybe even melting can be as well considered in heat transfer operations. And then we have mass transfer operations, which the name is not that clear or does not explain that much, but it is mostly into how mass transfers or the changes in concentration gradients occur. Mostly things like distillation, things like flashing, things like gas absorption, lexiviation, extraction, all these things that are not that much into momentum transport, are not that much into heating, are not that much into reaction, but rather working with concentrations. And then we have the chemical reaction units. It's kind of interesting that we don't have chemical reaction or kinetic transport or something like that. We just talk about those units as chemical reactions or the kinetic units. And these will be most likely working with chemical reaction, either a batch reactor or a tubular reactor or whatever type of reactor. If this unit is containing anything of chemical change, let it be chemical composition, this will be the unit. And I want to consider two extra categories, which may or not be quite straightforward, but I think it's way easier to separate them so the students understand better how they are arranged. And that will be the mechanical processes category, which works mostly with separations or solids, and the automation and control part of the industry, which I really think we don't pay that much attention as a recent graduate or maybe as a student, but then you go to the industry and you see that everything is automated and more importantly, everything has a safety control loop. You need to be knowing the levels, you need to know the temperatures, pressures, flow rates, and all this is kind of extra or let's say not within the unit operation per se. So definitely worth it to add it as a category. And guys, if you're into unit operations or want to learn more on the principles behind these type of equipments, for sure, check out the Cyber Week promo, which is going to be available until next Sunday. So essentially is the All Courses One subscription membership, but in this specific case, it's going to be one month free trial to check out all the courses that are currently available in my platform. So if we are into unit operations, we have a specific course for that. This is an overview on the most common type of unit operations. What are the theoretical concepts, how to design, how to operate, and how you will encounter this in the industry. For instance, piping, feeding, fluid metering, 
system curve to understand the pumpings. We also have a specific course on gas absorption and stripping if you're into the environment and wanting to clean all these uh, off gases, stack gases, flare gases and all that, you will most likely be using gas absorption to clean those. Talk about a little bit on the mass transfer review, very theoretical concepts, a little bit on exercises. We talk about the gas absorption phenomena, why do we need it, how we exploit it. Then we talk about how to design and operate trade columns, typical startup and operation. Of course, also pack columns, which is also common in the industry, not as common as trade columns, but for sure used in the industry. Advanced systems, which are, for instance, non-diluted cases, multiple uh, components, and finally, a little bit on software simulation, so you get the idea on how these processes operate in a chemical plant. I also have other courses such as flash distillation, binary distillation, and much more. So guys, definitely go and check out the Cyber Week Pro. So now that we know the categories, let's get started with the very first one, which is going to be Momentum Transport Operations. In this section, we have piping systems, pipelines, valves, we have vessels, containers, we have more importantly pumps, pumping systems, compressors, compressing systems, fluidized beds, ducts, fans, blowers, anything that is in charge of either moving from A to B, increasing velocities, or maybe even decreasing pressures, for instance, a vacuum equipment or so. So the very first one will be heat exchangers. The main task of these are to change temperatures, not that much into changing phases, mostly into increasing or decreasing temperatures. So for instance, you got the shell and tube exchanger. And talking about phase change, we also have evaporators, reboilers, condensers, and so on. One interesting aspect is also water cooling towers, which are pretty common in the industry. And I don't know if it's that likely that you encounter this unit operation in your studies but for sure are very important we also have air coolers or jackets that are used in equipments and we also have the copper coils or actually any type of coil system which is used to heat or cool down the unit operation Now, this is one of the most interesting parts of the categories, which is mass transfer operations, which is way much more complex than heat transfer and momentum transfer. In some cases, you will need to apply both of them. So kind of pressurizing velocity volumes, which is the momentum part. You will also need to account for heating, changes in temperature, evaporation, equilibrium. So it's a chaos. But these are one of the most important unit operations that you will encounter in a chemical or process plant. And actually, I'm pretty sure that I could make a video on this specific category, which sounds a very interesting idea. I will consider it for the future. But you can be talking about gas-gas operation. You could be talking about gas-liquid operation. You could be talking about liquid-gas operation. Probably you're wondering, isn't that the same? Well, not that much because you could have a bubble column or you could be having a spray column. And both are working with gas and liquid, but in different manner. So... I don't want to confuse you right now. For now, just assume that there is gas-liquid interaction, liquid-gas interaction. You have liquid-liquid interaction, which will be like, well, why do we have two liquids? Well, you have certain type of unit operations that will be working with different phases. Most likely you will encounter seawater with crude oils, which are two phases, both liquids. And we also have liquid-solid interaction. We also have gas-solid interaction and many other type of interactions. But for now, let's stick to the most common ones. So the most common one that you will think of or that pop ups into mind is the distillation column. It can be a binary distillation, multiple distillation, atmospheric distillation, a vacuum distillation unit, but whatever type of unit operation, it is most likely exploiting the vapor liquid interaction of the components. You also have gas absorption or gas absorbers, which are units that are essentially working with the gas liquids or maybe sometimes gas liquid solid systems. The main idea is to clean or let's say purify or treat a gas using a solvent or maybe remove solids from the gas using that solvent and so on. We have liquid liquid extraction, we have osmosis, membranes, dialysis, gas permeation, pervaporation, absorption columns, ion exchange columns, electrolysis, electrodialysis, 
leaching, washing, drying, and even crystallization. And I know that this sounds a lot of unit operations, but depending on the industry, you may be even using most of them. A good example is the sugar cane industry, which they have a lot. They treat solids, they treat liquids, and they treat gases. And not only that, you know that sugar is a crystallized material, so you will have most likely a crystallizer. You know that you need to evaporate material, so you need heat exchange. You need to be moving the liquid, so that's also momentum transport. So you get the idea, guys. Now let's talk about the chemical or kinetic unit operations. This is one of the most important ones and actually, as I have been telling you already guys, this is the type of unit operations or processes that separates the chemical engineer from all other process engineers. Let it be mechanical engineers, electrical engineers and so on. The main task of this type of unit operations are, as you can imagine, make chemical reactions, which are essentially changing the chemical composition of the input material and having a more desired product in the output. The most common unit operations that you will encounter here is of course the batch reactor, which is most likely the reactor that pops to mind immediately, or the CSTR, which is the continuous steer tank reactor, that's also a very common reactor. Another type of reactor will be the tubular reactor or also known as the plug flow reactor, essentially a reactor that occurs within the piping system or a tubular section. We also have packed bed reactions, which is pretty common, especially if you need a catalyst bed in order to proceed with the chemical reaction. We also have this little section on special chemical reactors that will be in a very unique operation style, but are used extensively. So for instance, a fire heater or a furnace that operate with a fuel and the main idea is to obtain the most energy out of it. We also have dryers, we have gasifiers, kilns, we could be talking about bioreactors, pulp digesters, we could be talking about slurry reactors, maybe even nuclear reactors, which will be kind of outside of the scope right now, on most likely also from the chemical engineer, but it's also a type of reactor that you may encounter. And the next category will be the mechanical processes. I really think that you can fit this type of operations in either momentum transport or maybe mass transfer operations, but I think it's way easier just to remove and talk about solids as if they were a unique category. If we were to be very strict, we shouldn't be taking the solids out of the operations, but I really think it's way easier and avoid complicating yourself is just way easier guys, so let it be. Some type of operations that come up to mind will be crushing, will be milling, will be mechanical size partitioning, which is essentially a fancy word for crushing. You could be also separating the size particles via sieve trays or sieve systems. If we are talking about water, we definitely need to talk about flotation, flocculation, filtration, maybe even decanting, centrifugation, sedimentation. If we're talking about trash, we could be thinking about magnetic separation for the metals and much more operations working with mechanical processes. And the last category I wanted to introduce you guys will be the automation and control part. All those little details that will be in the chemical plant ready for you to operate and see in a beautiful monitor or control panel what's happening. But we know that this is no magic. This is engineering behind this control panel. And in this part, we could be talking about actuators, sensors, and controllers. So the actuators are, as the name implies, those guys that act towards or occur, make it happen. These can be valves, relays, motors, pistons, pneumatic systems, anything that makes the actual action. Then we have sensors, which will show the level, the temperature, pressure, maybe even flow rates, position, velocities, and much more. And finally, we have controllers, which as the name implies, control the operation. So the sensor by itself is not going to be changing the level and the actuator by itself is not going to be regulating the action that needs to be carried on in order to control all the process. What you need is a controller, typically a PLC, and what this type of machine or equipment do is essentially try to use all the information and regulate the process. So what we want to do is to have a process within specifications and for this we need to have the process in accordance to all the input values. So all the output values are within our ranges. 
And this will be it guys, this is what I wanted to share with you on the unit operations, but more importantly on how we categorize them so you get to know more on whether is this unit operation doing some heating or heat transfer operation or whether this equipment is working with some momentum transport operations or maybe if you are working with a mass transfer operation equipment try to understand and try to approach it in that way believe me guys it's way easier when you understand the equipment and try to fix it or try to make sense of what's doing into the operation if you're working in the process control part it will be way easier to understand the principles and what needs to be done in that type of unit operation and if you are a experienced engineer let us know if this category makes sense maybe let us know if the categories need to change maybe you want to add an extra category or maybe you want to add an extra unit operation to the categories that would be great so more students and more young engineers get to know what are these type of unit operations the equipment that they will be encountering in the industry and make their life easy when they go to the chemical plant and before we go i really want to encourage you to check out the free trial for the monthly subscription you will be able to check out a lot of courses but if you're into unit operations or want to learn more on flash distillation, binary distillation, gas absorption, or any other type of unit operations, for sure, take advantage of the Cyber Week promo, which is the free trial. Check it out. If you like it, keep it. If you don't like it, cancel anytime. Make no worries. On my behalf, that will be it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.